Hello viewers, 4DIYers here with another video for everyone. In this breaker video here, I'll be showing you how to clean carbon buildup out of a plastic intake. Depending on the engine design, its condition, and maintenance history, this can affect how much carbon buildup is inside an intake. For this, I'm using my 2010 BMW 335D as an example, and unfortunately, this particular engine, the M57, is known for having this problem. With plastic intakes, you'll need to be extremely careful not to damage the intake where you do risk jeopardizing its durability, such as using harsh chemicals. Plastic intakes also cannot be exposed to any media blasting either. I am currently partnered with Turner Motorsports. They are a reputable BMW supplier that has been present in the BMW community for a number of years. With every sale from their website, using the link in the video description, I do get a bit of cutback to help keep my channel going. The links to these parts used in the video will be included in the video description. Intake removals will vary based on different vehicles. Once that intake has been removed from the car, I would highly recommend using paper towel stuffed down each of the intake runners so nothing falls inside the engine. Now is further disassembly. First was removing the intake gaskets using a small screwdriver. Over time with age and exposed to any oils or fuel, these gaskets can harden up. I would highly recommend having a replacement set before installing that intake. Here's a quick view inside the intake to see the buildup. This buildup can cause a loss of performance and fuel economy. Next is removing the bolt sleeves. Simply wiggle these back and forth and they'll pop out of their location. They only snap into place. Off the side you can see I'm using my OEM Tools 26052 Magnetic Foldable Fastener Tray. These come in a pack of four, are collapsible for easy storage, or can increase for storage depth, come in four colors, and can hold up to two pounds. A link to these will be included in the video description to Mobile Distributor Supply. Using a large standard screwdriver, unclip the actuator bar from the swirl flaps, then pull off the main lever from the actuator motor. To remove each swirl flap, a Torx T20 driver is required. The T20 is required again to remove the actuator motor for the swirl flaps. The motor is also required to be removed in order to gain access to the two Torx screws on the one swirl flap. Using that T20 driver again, remove the two fasteners holding on the swirl flap actuator. Then slide off the actuator assembly from the intake. Using a standard screwdriver, gently pry apart each of the swirl flaps. Take your time, as we are working with plastic. They can be easily damaged. Now onto the EGR and throttle body assembly. First was removing the top bracket. This uses T25 Torx screws. Now to remove the assembly from the plastic intake, there will be four 5mm socket head bolts. Flip the intake around and then remove the two bottom socket head bolts. Finally remove the assembly. Here you can see the buildup on the intake side. And then you can see the buildup around the EGR valve. Using a standard screwdriver, remove the gasket around each of the bolt sleeves and then push the sleeves through. Remove the fastener clips using a standard screwdriver. And finally remove the MAP sensor. This simply fits into a grommet. Using a worn screwdriver with no sharp edges, scrape out as much buildup as possible from the intake. This will help with the cleaning process and allow that cleaner to bite in quicker. Simply rotate the screwdriver around on the inside of the holes and then wipe on a paper towel. The same is done for the intake runners along the opening and at the EGR valve. Here I have a garbage can full of hot water. I have boiled water using my propane heater with a pot. A citrus cleaner is then dumped into the water. This is a concentrated cleaner which mixes in with the water. Pick a cleaner which won't damage or jeopardize the integrity of the plastic intake, therefore no solvents. Water is added as needed. In order to provide some agitation in the intake, I'll stick a hose inside the intake connected to an air valve which was running at about 5 psi from an air compressor. Eventually more water was added to the intake so it was fully submerged. The intake soaked for about 3 hours. This will depend on the severity of the buildup.
The intake was then removed and a pressure washer was used to wash out any softened up buildup on the inside. Make sure you are doing this in an area where you don't stain any surrounding surfaces. If you do find that some of the buildup is left over, use a round brush to clean the inside of each of the runners. A popsicle stick can also be used to help scrape away any residue inside. The intake is then soaked again or you can spray cleaner inside each of the runners. The pressure washer is then used again to wash out the intake runners. When washing the intake, make sure you don't get any dirt on the inside of the intake runners which can cause damage to your engine. As for the EGR assembly, again use a warrant screwdriver to scrape away any residue inside. Once satisfied, you can then use brake cleaner to wash away any remaining residue. A toothbrush can also be used to agitate the surface. Again, wash away any remaining residue with brake cleaner. You can see the inside of the EGR valve now. Next, you can see the inside of the intake runners. There is some still residue built up, however, a majority has been removed. Next was reinstalling those bolt sleeves. A silicone spray can be applied to each of the swirl flap openings. This will help make the installation of the gaskets much easier. Swirl flap caps are then installed. These caps are only intended for off-road use only. This is not a street legal modification. This goes against any laws which no longer make your vehicle fit for the road. Each of those torque screws are then installed and tightened. The swirl flap actuator motor is then reinstalled. This simply clips into place and then the two retaining screws are then installed. The gasket surfaces are cleaned with paper towel to ensure there is no contaminants which may cause sealing issues. The newly supplied gaskets from Turner Motorsports are then installed. These gaskets simply fit into the groove. They are held into place so there is minimal risk of them falling out during installation. The fastener clips were pushed back into place on their locations on the intake. Then the EGR gasket was installed along with the assembly. Before putting everything back together on the car, I would highly recommend vacuuming the engine to remove any loose debris which could potentially fall into the intake runners. A brush can be used to help agitate the surface if you wish. The gasket surfaces on the engine were cleaned up using a cloth and brake cleaner. This will remove any built up residue which can potentially cause sealing issues. If you do find any hard to remove surface imperfections or debris, use green scotch bright to clean up the surface. After that is installing everything in reverse of removal. New videos are released every week on my channel. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button. It's a huge help to me and leave a comment below if you found this tutorial helpful. If you're not a subscriber, be sure to also hit that subscribe button. Thank you for watching.